Hello and welcome to the Moody Stripes Blanket. I'm going to be using a worsted weight yarn with a five millimeter hook for my sample size here. You will see on the written pattern how you can adjust the length of the stripes and the rows and how you combine these stripes together to form any size of project that you wish and in whatever order you like. So I will just be doing a small section of each of the different stripes to show you the stitches involved in that and then look forward to seeing some of your creativity as you put your project together. So we want to make sure we start with an opening chain with an even number of stitches. I've started with 40 chains for my sample here that I'm showing you in the video. So chain whatever length you would like as long as it's an even number. And then for row one, we will work double crochet into each of those chains. I will show you in a few minutes how to work a foundation double crochet if you prefer not to start with a chain and work double crochets into it. So starting first with my chain, we need to chain two more and then we're going to work a double crochet in the fourth one two three fourth chain from the hook so yarn over insert your hook pick up your loop yarn over pull through two so that will count as two double crochet so those chains right at the beginning count as a double crochet and we'll just continue to down each chain working one double crochet into it and then you should end up with the same number of double crochet as your chain. If you would prefer to try the foundation double crochet instead of making a long chain and working double crochets into it, you would work it like this. So we start with the loop on our hook and chain three. Then we yarn over like we would to make a double crochet. We want to insert in this bottom chain and pull up our loop. Then we would yarn over and pull through one to make a chain and that's the base that we work into for our next stitch. Then we yarn over and pull through two twice finishing a regular double crochet. So yarn over, then you go into that base we just worked, and I like to pick up those two loops at the bottom to keep it nice and even. Pull up our loop, yarn over, pull through one, or make that chain one, pull through two, pull through two. I'll make a couple more, and then I'll show you what it looks like when we turn it sideways. In that bottom chain we make, pull up a loop, pull through one or chain one, pull through two twice. Okay, so we kind of work this row, we'll make a long strip this way, and then when we're finished we will turn it sideways. I'll take my hook out. Then you can see how we have a row of double crochet worked into what resembles the chain So if you would prefer to try that method to start your blanket or your stripes, you can go ahead and do that as well. So for row two, we will just turn our work, chain one, and then we're going to single crochet in each of those stitches down the row. So for row three, we want to start with a double crochet. So we've turned our work. Traditionally, we start with a chain two or a chain three, which counts as that first double crochet in that first stitch. So you can work that if you're comfortable with that. Sometimes people will work a single crochet in that first stitch followed by a chain one to act as a double crochet or some start with a half double crochet chain one. 
I like to use what is often referred to as a twisted double crochet. So I just pull my starting loop a little bit longer and then I'm going to twist my hook around under that loop to act as the yarn over, insert the hook into the stitch, pull the loop through, yarn over, pull through that loop and that twisted loop and then pull through two again as my starting double crochet. So whichever method you prefer, it's referred to in this pattern as a starting double crochet. So you choose one of those to use throughout. And then we'll just work double crochet in each of the stitches down this row as well. So you can complete this double crochet row. And then for row four, we will work we will chain one and then work a single crochet in each of the stitches as well. So you can go ahead and complete row three, a double crochet row, and then work row four, the single crochet row. And I'll meet you back here for row five. So that's completed rows one through four. Remembering at the end of row four, that final single crochet goes in the top of the starting double crochet, or if you used a chain, it needs to go in the top of that starting chain. Row five, we will begin with that starting double crochet of your choice. And double crochet in the next two stitches, one and two. So we have three double crochet before we start our textured pattern. And at the end of the row, we want to have three double crochet as well. So you'll need to stop your last repeat with three stitches left. So to work this pattern, we will yarn over twice. We're going to make a front post treble around the fourth double crochet, two rows below. So our double crochet row counting from the edge, one, two, three, four. So around that double crochet, we will insert our hook around the back, pull the loop through, oops, there we go, yarn over and pull through two three times for our front post treble. So back behind that treble, we're gonna skip the next stitch and double crochet in the next. Front post treble, we'll skip a double crochet after that last front post treble and working around that next stitch, we will work another front post treble. Skip the stitch behind and a double crochet in the next stitch. So we'll just repeat those two stitches down the row, front post treble, skip a stitch behind, double crochet. And when we work the front post treble, there's always that skipped double crochet in between, two rows below. So you can continue to do that, repeat all the way down, and I will meet you just at the end of this row. So I've reached the end of my row. I've done the last set of front post treble with a double crochet after it, and I have three stitches left. So we're going to work a double crochet in each of those three stitches. If you find for some reason that your count isn't quite working out, just make sure that you've only skipped one double crochet in between the front post treble. And then on the back side as well, I find it easy to find where I skipped a stitch and occasionally it can be easy to skip two stitches instead of one. So just double check that you've skipped the right number of stitches in between. And that should help your count work out. So we'll just finish this row with those double crochet in the last three stitches. To end row five. Row six we're going to just repeat row four which is that row of single crochet so you can work that now and I'll meet you here for row seven. Okay, so I've completed row six that repeat of row four the single crochet. We do a turning or that starting double crochet and double crochet in the first three stitches after that. So it'll be a total of four double crochet to start row seven. Then we're going to work the same set of front post treble, skip a stitch, 
double crochet. We're going to start with a front post treble in the skipped double crochet between or in that double crochet that's placed between those two front post treble from row five. So front post treble around that double crochet in between the trebles from row five, skip a stitch behind, double crochet in the next stitch. And you'll just continue to work that down the row, that front post treble around the double crochet that's in between the front post treble of row five, skip a stitch behind, double crochet in the next. So you'll work this down. You're going to have the same number of repeats as we did on row five. So when we get to the end of the row, you will, the last front post treble will be just after the front post treble, the last front post treble there. And then we'll double crochet in the last two stitches after that. But I'll meet you at the end of the row. So you can go ahead and work this row. So I finished my last repeat. The final front post treble is just past the last front post treble from row five. Double crochet there, two stitches left. So we'll finish this row with two double crochet. Then for row eight, again, we're going to repeat row four, that single crochet row, so you can go ahead and work that now. So we're ready for row nine. We'll start with that starting double crochet again. And it's a repeat of row five, so we will work two more double crochet. So the row starts with the three double crochet and then in the fourth double crochet two rows below will front post treble which will be just before the front post treble of round seven row seven so front post treble around that fourth double crochet two rows below skip a stitch behind double crochet in the next stitch and we'll continue on down the row as we did for row five and I'll meet you at the end of this row. So at the end of row nine, our last front post treble will be just before, or it will actually be between the last two from row seven. And then there should be three stitches left, so we'll place a double crochet in each of those three stitches to finish row nine. And that's our last row of the textured stitches for this stripe. We're going to repeat row four, which is the single crochet row, and then repeat row three, another double crochet row. So you can go ahead and work those two right now. So that's the end of our first stripe. If you wish to use a contrasting color for the stripes in between the larger stripes, um, what I suggest is to pull through the last, pull through on that final double crochet to the new color you wish to use and then you're ready to start. Or you can fasten off and just start with a standing stitch as well. So for row 12, this is the division between our stripes. We will re repeat row four, which is the single crochet row. So you can go ahead and work single crochet down each of the stitches of row 11 to complete row 12. So for stripe two, it is called the tranquility stripe. There's three rows for it. I am going to be following the color suggestions on the written pattern. You can feel free to use a contrasting color for this smaller stripe if you wish. That's up to you. So tranquility stripe starts with row 13, repeating row three, which is a row of double crochet. So you can go ahead and work that row. Then for row 14, for stripe number two, we will repeat row four, which is a single crochet in each stitch down the row. And then row 15 of Tranquility Stripe, we will repeat row three, which is the row of double crochet in each of the stitches. So you can go ahead and work that now. So that is the end 
of uh, the Tranquility Stripe or stripe number two after we've done row 15. Then there is one more row of a division between before we do the next stripe. So again, if you're continuing the same color like I am, we'll just continue on. If you want to have a contrasting color as you did for this first row where my white is for that division between the stripes, then you need to change color now. So row 16, the divider between the stripes is a repeat of row four again. So that's the single crochet down the row, single crochet in each of the stitches. So you can go ahead and work that now. So in this picture here at the beginning of the pattern, we can see this row of the green on that stripe number two. So I'm just going to show you how to work that right now. So surface slip stitches, you can work around the post. Sometimes, um, especially if you're not familiar with it, I find it easier to go into the tops of the stitches where we've already worked a stitch. So you can pick any row of these rows of the Tranquility. The most important thing when working um, the surface slip stitches is your work or your yarn is in the back or behind your work. So you put your, you keep your working yarn behind, you insert your hook down through the stitch, pull the working yarn up and through the loop on your hook for a slip stitch. So I used to struggle with this until it was described that our hook is almost working like a sewing machine needle going down and pulling up the loop and pulling it through the loop on your hook. So if this is something you wish to do, I recommend it do, working it soon after you have worked stripe number two, so there's less bulk. If you wait to the very end, it can be very bulky to work this contrasting row. So I, the other tip for surface slip stitches is to keep it loose, not um, sloppy loose, but you don't want it to tight and to pull your work in. Sometimes you may find it helpful to go up a size or two in your hook size as you work this. Okay, so if this is something you wish to do, you can go ahead and work that row of surface slip stitches now. So stripe number three, straight decisions. It's a nine row stripe. Row 17, we will do a repeat of row three, which is our double crochet in each of the stitches down the side. So starting with your method of a starting double crochet and then double crochet in each of the stitches down the side. So you can go ahead and finish row 17. Then for row 18, we will repeat row four, which is the row of single crochet in each stitch. So you can go work that row now as well. And then after 18 is row 19, which is another repeat of row three for another row of double crochet. And then row 20 repeats row four, another row of single crochet. So you can work those three rows right now, a row of single crochet, a row of double, a row of single crochet, and I'll meet you back here for row 21. So after row 20, your work should look something like this with the row of double crochet, single, double, and single. We're ready now to start the textured part of stripe number three. So we want to start with our starting double crochet in that first stitch. And then we'll work two more double crochet in the next one in each of the next two stitches. And then we're going to make a front post double treble around the seventh double crochet two rows below. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's my seventh double crochet two rounds, or two rows below. So front post double treble, we wrap the yarn three times around the hook. We'll go down around 
the back of the post of that double crochet, pull up our loop, yarn over and pull through two four times to finish the double treble. Now there's a couple of tricks when you're working a double treble. Sometimes this loose can or this loop can pull and get quite loose. So the first thing I do is I'm holding that loop, keeping it more snug on my hook and enter from the front around the back. And then I find what's helpful to remember is to draw that yarn through that I'm always working back towards this loop instead of trying to reach, reach that loop over to the stitch. I'm always pulling through back to the loop and then that doesn't stretch that loop as much. So that's one technique you can use if you find that those get really loose. We're going to skip the next stitch behind that front post double treble, double crochet into the next stitch. Then we'll work another front post double treble, so that yarn over three times in the second double crochet pass. We're going to skip one double crochet after that first one we worked around and then go around the next one. And again, pulling through two four times to come back to our starting. Skip a stitch behind, double crochet in the next. Okay, and we'll repeat those two stitches down the row and until there is five double crochet left or five stitches left at the end of the row. So I'll meet you down here to help you finish off this row. So I'm at the end of my row. My last front post double treble is on the fourth double crochet from the end of the row. And then I skipped one and made my double crochet and there's five stitches left. So we will just double crochet in each of those five stitches to complete this row. Four and five double crochet. Then for row 22, we are just going to repeat row four again for a row of single crochet in each stitch across. You can go ahead and work that now. Now we're ready to work row 23. As with row 21, the number of repeats we have really depends on how many stitches you had to start with. So just keep track of that number so it's the same for this row as it was for 21. <clears throat> so we're going to work our starting double crochet and then double crochet in the next six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Then we'll work the front post double treble two rows below and this one should fall in the double crochet that's between the first two front post double treble from row 21. So I've marked that stitch to find it more so you can see that clearly. So I'm going to work a front post double treble so this time we're kind of reaching behind where we're working to work around that double crochet and then yarn over pull through two twice to finish that front post double treble. <clears throat> so we will kind of be making an arrow shape with these two rows of the front post double. Skip a stitch behind, double crochet in the next. And then we'll work a front post double treble around the next double crochet between the next set of two front post double treble. Skip a stitch, double crochet in the next, and front post double treble around that next double crochet 
between the two front post double treble from round 21. Okay, so you can continue to work down the row. Your last front post double treble should fall in this double crochet between the last set of two front post double treble. So I'll meet you at this end of the row. So when you've finished your last repeat, it should look something like this. The last front post double treble is between the two last front post double trebles from two rows below. We will skip one stitch behind it. And there'll be four stitches left and we'll place a double crochet in each of those four stitches to complete row 23. So this row will have one less repeat than row 21. Row 24 is a repeat of row four, so that's our single crochet row. So you can work that now, single crochet in each of the stitches across. Then our last row of the stripe, row 25, is a repeat of row three. So it's a double crochet in each of the stitches along the row. So you can go ahead and work that now. So to work the division between the stripes, we repeat row four, so a row of single crochet all across uh, before we start the next stripe. For stripe number four, it is called fingers crossed. It's a seven row stripe. We are going to start row 27 with a repeat of row three, which is a double crochet in each stitch along. So you'll make your starting double crochet and double crochet in all the remaining stitches. So you can go ahead and work that. And then row 28 will, will, will be a repeat of row four, a single crochet as well. So you can finish those two rows. So row 27 and 28 should look something like this. We'll be on the right side again to start row 29. So we'll make our starting double crochet and then double crochet in the next two stitches. One and two. So we're going to skip one stitch and then double crochet in the next. So we skip this stitch, double crochet in the next. And then working backward in front of that double crochet, we want to double crochet into that skipped stitch. So making crossed double crochet. And we'll continue to do that all the way down the row. So we skip a stitch, double crochet in the next, and working in front, double crochet in the skipped stitch. Okay, so you want to work that down until you have three stitches left, and I'll meet you at that spot of this row. So I've worked my way down my first row of this design. And I have three stitches left, so we'll just double crochet in each of those three stitches, which ends row 29. Then for row 30, we want to turn and repeat row four, which is that single crochet in each stitch down the row. So you can go ahead and work that now, and I'll meet you back here for row 31. Row 31, we will start with the starting double crochet and double crochet in the next two. It'll be the same as row 29. Then, so we will skip a stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, and then reaching back in front, double crochet in that skipped stitch. So you should have the same number of repeats on this row as we did for row 29. You can go ahead and finish up this row, remembering to stop before the last three stitches 
to work three double crochet at the end of the row. So then to finish off stripe number four, you work row 32, which is a repeat of row four, the single crochet, and row 33 repeats row three, which is the double crochet row. If you are adding another stripe um, this long way on your blanket, you're going to want to put one of those division rows between, which is just a row of single crochet, before continuing on. So stripe number five, this is the final variation of a stripe for this pattern. Um, it is called two choices. I'm going to do mine across the side of my work just to show you how that can work. I've chosen to do one row of this division row of single crochet across the edge. You want to make sure when you're working along the edges that there's still an even number of stitches. So the general guideline to working um, stitches into the ends of rows is one if it's a single crochet row, you would add one stitch. If it's double crochet, you would add two stitches. Sometimes I find that a little bit bulky, so on some of the double crochet rows, I just do one stitch, depending on what I need. So if you're working on the side, you can go ahead and do that, or you might choose to do one of uh, the, um, you might choose to do the stripe number two for a larger pattern in there. The choice is yours. So we're going to start right in now with stripe number five. We'll start with um, row 35, which is a repeat of row three, a double crochet row. Row 36 is a repeat of row four, so a single crochet row. Row 37 is a double crochet row, and row 38 is a single crochet. So the four rows you can do right away, uh, a double crochet, single, double, and single crochet rows, and I'll meet you after those starting four rows. So for row 39, we will start with our starting double crochet and double crochet in each of the next two stitches. Then we want to make a two front post treble cluster around the fifth stitch two rounds below. So one, two, three, four, five. This stitch right here from the edge. So yarn over twice, work from the front to the back, around to the front, pull up a loop yarn over, pull through two twice, leaving two loops on the hook, yarn over twice again, and go around that same post, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two twice, we should have three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops for a front post, two front post treble cluster. We'll skip one stitch behind, and double crochet in the next stitch. And then two rows below again, we'll skip the stitch beside where we just worked that cluster. And then around the next stitch, we will make two front post treble cluster again. So we pull through two, leave those two loops on the hook. work a second partial treble and pull through the last three at the end. Skip one stitch behind, double crochet in the next. And we'll just continue that down the row, skipping a stitch two rows below and working the two front post treble cluster around that next stitch. Skip a stitch behind, double crochet in the next. So you continue to work that down the row and I will meet you just before we get to the end of the row. I'm almost at the end of this row. So our last uh, front post, our two front post treble cluster will be on the fourth stitch before the end of the row, two rows below.
skip a stitch behind, double crochet in the next, and then there should be three stitches left, and we'll place a double crochet in each of those three stitches. Which completes row 39. Then for row 40, you will repeat row 4 again, that row of single crochet. So you can go ahead and work that now, and I'll meet you here for row 41. So row 41, we had that row of single crochet. I mean, row 40, we have the row of single crochet. For row 41, we'll start with our starting double crochet and double crochet in each of the next four stitches. Then we're ready to work these front post treble clusters again and we're going to work in the stitch in between the two clusters from two rows below. So right in that stitch there. We'll work those two front post treble clusters. We'll skip one stitch behind and double crochet in the next stitch. And then work another two front post treble cluster in that stitch in between. Skip a stitch behind, double crochet in the next. So we'll continue to work that all the way down the row. And I'll meet you at the end of this row. You will have one repeat less on this row than you did on row 39. So your last repeat will fall in between the last two front post treble clusters from two rows ago. And you should be ending with, you should have the three stitches left on the end of that row. So we'll place a double crochet in each of those three stitches. to finish off row 41. Then to finish off the stripe, we're going to work another row of a row four repeat, which is the single crochet row, and then ending with a row three repeat, the double crochet row. So you can go ahead and work those rows right now. So that's the final stripe I have to show you today. Have fun um, combining these stripes in a layout that suits you and any combination of the stripes to make the project you have in mind. So enjoy and I hope to see you back sometime again.